Hi everyone, welcome back in this video and in the next one, I am going to focus a little bit on color transformation. And this can be uh, a useful tool by itself, but uh, more importantly, if you would like to bring all your images into some sort of a uniform color space, why would you like to do that? Well, maybe you are training a deep learning algorithm and then all your input images uh, look quite different. So maybe you wanna bring everything into one a representative color space, let's say, not color space, but look and feel, then this can be a great approach. Or you can use it in a different way where you want to take your images and uh, apply these type of transformations so they look slightly different. So when you train your deep learning model, it actually sees your images in certain different uh, look and feel. In a way, I'm talking about generalizing your deep learning model because your images uh, capture the diversity that your future images may contain. So with that information, we can go ahead and jump in. And again, as usual, I request you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you're feeling extra generous, look for that thanks button right next to the subscribe uh, uh, button. Uh, now, both of these uh, videos, both of these approaches are based on some published papers. So let me go through a couple of uh, key aspects from this specific paper in this case. And at a high level, the summary is pretty straightforward. You have an input image and let's say you have a reference image and you would like to take the look and feel of this reference image and apply that to your input image. So if you do that with this natural image that you see on the left hand side, you would end up with an image that looks like this. It looks very nice, artistic. But in real life scenarios, if you look at these pathology, histology images, again, it can be any, it can be satellite images, it can be some other type of images, wherever you have variability and you know you want them to bring, uh, you want to bring them to one space, this can be a great approach. And in, I'm using pathology example because this is a big pain for, the, for uh, processing these images. So let's say the input images look very different, right? So this one is more towards the purplish, this one is in the middle uh, purple colors, and this one has a different look and feel. If you wanna bring all of these into a reference image, like into this space, as you can see, uh, then uh, this is exactly the video for you, right? So you are applying this and you can see how all these output images have the look and feel of the template image right here. Again, I'm not talking about not using any template. I'm talking about actually you have a template, you know that's how your images should look like and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, that's a lot of talking from my side. So let's jump on to the next slide where I'm gonna show you uh, the reference. So the reference, I leave that as part of the description, the link to the original paper, it's called color transfer between images. If you hear, or if you see the term Reinhard color transformation, that's exactly what we're talking about, because that's the first author uh, on this page uh, on, uh, for this paper. Now, I uh, let me just read uh, all of it. I just took a couple of snapshots from this paper. So it makes it easy for me to summarize. So what are they talking about here? Basically, when you take a typical color image, like a RGB space, right? I mean, your color images are in RGB space when you use OpenCV, scikit image and so on. If you use that and if you try to process it, what happens? What they're saying is in the RGB space, most pixels will have large values for red and green if the blue channel is large because R is not independent of G is not independent of blue in this in this space. At a pixel, you may have a blue pixel. And what does blue correspond? It has blue, it has the elements from red, it has elements from green, right? So the point here is uh, these are not independent. You need to change that to some sort of an independent space and that's exactly what lab space is. I hope you know what that is. I have done a couple of videos in the past on this LAB space. Yeah. So once you convert that into LAB, then all these three are independent and then you can kind of go ahead and uh, apply some sort of a changes and exactly what type of uh, transformations do we uh, perform. So they're talking about subtracting the mean and taking the mean and standard deviation of the reference image, taking the mean and standard deviation of your uh, future images and doing some math, very simple math to it. And it's as simple as a few lines of code, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. But uh, after the transformations are done, you take the image back from lab space to your RGB space and you can save them on your local drive, right? So that's exactly what the process looks like. And if you look at this, it's basically this, this is the meat of the code. 
So for each channel, yeah, we are going to perform these transformations. So for i in range 0 to height, like you're going from 0 to height, 0 to width, and number of channels, right? So that through all of those, you are basically subtracting the mean from your images and multiplying that with the template standard divided by the image standard, right? So image template standard, there you go, divided by the image standard, and you multiply that with the L star, which is L minus L right there, which is uh, the X minus image mean right there. And then you add the template mean to it. That's it. And then you go ahead and save the images. As simple as that. Now let's see how this is done in uh, Python. Again, I am going to share the code. So please focus on what is going on on the screen. Pretty quick uh, vi uh, video, I should say. Okay, and uh, here is the code, as I, as I promised, very few lines of code, right? So, and this is the part that I showed you earlier as part of the presentation. Now, let me sh demonstrate this on a couple of uh, two different sets of images. One, let's just take natural images. I mean, I have, uh, let me increase this to extra large. I have some of these natural images right there, and I am going to define a template image, which is uh, this deep red sunset image, and I want to apply this style to the these images just to make sure how uh, I mean this is an easy way for us to understand exactly what's going on and then we switch to the pathology input uh, to see how it works there okay so I have a whole bunch of input images uh, well four images that I downloaded from Google and I just placed it in my input images folder that's what's going on I'm gonna use OpenCV to read these images and uh, for each of these images, and again, I defined a function for get the getting the mean and standard deviation for each of these images. And I'm gonna call this function later on as part of my, when I'm walking through each image. And once I have the image mean, image standard deviation, template mean, template standard deviation, it's the simple math that we just uh, looked at uh, a minute ago. So you take your image, you take your X uh, right there, uh, minus uh, my image mean, Again, we just looked at this formula, so no point in uh, uh, going through that again, but let's go ahead and look at the result in uh, for, for these images. So my input images, and I'm saving my output under output right there, and I am going to, oh, let's comment this out. Let's use the sunset template image as our template image, and let's run this. I mean, uh, you'll find that the code is a bit slow because obviously I wasn't thinking about any optimization or anything in the next video. Let's actually look at some published code by others and uh, it's much faster uh, and it does a few other things in addition to just doing this uh, normalization, but it doesn't matter. This code works. Uh, we are implementing exactly what's in the paper right here. Okay, so all of this is done. So let us go to our input images and uh, let's also open our uh, output images and let's compare these two so there you go so view extra large so you can clearly see our sunset uh, which is like towards the red image that gets applied to all of our input images so basically our input images they all have pretty much the same look and feel okay that's fine so now that you understand what is going on let us switch our input to our pathology images and again these are the images that i have uh, they look different right i mean this one looks different from that and this one is a uh, bright pinkish shade this one also has that pinkish but this one is more towards the purplish and these two probably look alike but it doesn't matter let's bring all of those into the same space and for that i am going to use uh, template as instead of just using one why not just use a couple of template images uh, well you can if you want by the way but uh, I just put these two just to make sure how these images first let's use one dot png as template it's fun exercise so why not uh, let us uh, again like I said I did not write the code in a very nice elegant way but it makes the point uh, it is usable. Uh, don't get me wrong. It is usable. I can do better when it comes to optimizing this code instead of changing stuff every time. Uh, okay, so let's do pathology input and let's do 1.png first. Yeah, so 1.png is uh, again, let's uh, extra this look. This is a different look, right? So let's go ahead and use that look for now and let's run these one more time. 
Okay, so it is done. Let's go back and have a look at our pathology output. There you go. So all of these, in fact, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, open, open a new window, pathology output, open a new window. So you can clearly see how our input and output images are. So these are original and this is, this is uh, in a different color space. So you can see how they are all in a similar thing. Let's end this video by actually making them look better. I hate this color space, uh, I mean, or that look. Let's actually use this image, 3.png, which is, uh, I guess, the most common way. Uh, let's see, 3.png, okay, one final time. Okay, let us open these again. I shouldn't have closed the input, that's okay. Let's put our input right there, pathology output, open a new window. Let's put this right here. Now I like what I see on the screen. There you go. You see that? You see this? And if you are curious, uh, let me open this one image and let's open this image right here. And you can see how these two images compare right there. Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial to be useful and stay tuned for the next one where we are following a very similar process from a different paper where they took uh, this approach, exactly this approach, and they also combined it with this color augmentation that you find in PyTorch or TensorFlow, it doesn't matter. And they combine these two such a way that the this space is constrained. I mean, if you just do some color augmentation by 20%, 30% with saturation and hue, then it can be anywhere, right? The images may look bluish, but you will never have like a bluish tint pathology images. So how to constrain your space, uh, you know, this color space, so you still get like the data augmented, but within the limits that you actually define. So that is uh, the goal for the next video. So again, please do not uh, forget to hit the subscribe button. Let's meet again in the next tutorial.